Hey everyone, and welcome to the machine learning activity. In this video, we're going to help a machine learn. Now, machines learn much the same way that people do, through experience. In this activity, using a camera, a Jetson Nano board, and some computer software, we're going to teach a machine the difference between a thumbs up and a thumbs down. Now, that may seem like a pretty trivial task to a person like you or me, but to a machine, it's going to be a lot more tricky. When I show you a thumbs up, it's pretty clear that it's the hand symbol that represents the thumbs up. So it doesn't matter where I move that around, you'll still recognize that I'm giving you a thumbs up. To a machine, you have to be a lot more specific. When I give a thumbs up here, it may be interpreted differently than a thumbs up over here. So in this activity, through repetition and many photographs, we'll hopefully help to train a machine to recognize in an image that this is what represents the thumbs up. We'll be doing that for thumbs down as well, and there'll be another activity that you can do that also relates to machine learning. Let's get started and see how we set up the activity. Now we're going to start the activity with the Jetson Nano Kits. Inside of your kit, there will be the Jetson Nano, two Wi-Fi antenna, a red serial cable, a power supply block, a USB camera, and the power supply block cable. Our first step will be to attach the antenna to the Jetson. Take the power cable and plug it into any nearby electrical outlet. Then take the rounded node and plug that into the back of the Jetson. Take one end of the red serial cable, plug that into the USB port on your computer. Take the other end and plug that into the back corner of the Jetson. Now we can attach the USB camera by plugging it into any one of the four USB ports on the back of the Jetson. Once your camera is plugged in, position it atop the monitor in front of you so that it'll be easy for you to take pictures of yourself while you do the activity. Once the Jetson is plugged into the computer, you can now connect to it via serial cable. First, open Device Manager in order to find what the COM ID is. Type Device Manager in Search. Press OK. Open the Ports tab and look for the USB serial device. Next, open PuTTY. You should see a window like this pop up. Switch to the serial connection type and type in the COM ID that you just saw in Device Manager. In this case, it would be COM3. Change the speed from 9600 to 115200. Press open to open the connection and you should see this terminal window pop up. You are now inside of the Jetson terminal and this is where we start the activity. Type in the username and password as Jetson Jetson. Note that the password will not show up as you type it. Now we are in the command line for the Jetson and we can start the activity. Now that we're inside of the Jetson terminal, we can launch the Jupyter Notebook. Type ENIUS 100 ML to start the activity. First, it's going to update the current code from GitHub. It will take around 15 to 20 seconds. Awesome. So it pulled a couple changes from the GitHub and now it's asking for our name and it's going to ask for a section as well. So my name is Josh and I'm in section uh, one, two, three, four. It's going to create a directory just for you and it's going to then prompt for the password again. So the password is Jetson. We're gonna wait. Um, this can take anywhere from five seconds to around 30 seconds. Um, we're just gonna wait a second and then we're going to connect to the Jupyter Notebook in our web browser. Once you see this allow for Jupyter Notebook to start and you get this root at Desk, uh, Jetson Desktop, DLI Nano or something along those lines, 
That means Jupyter Notebook is up and ready to go. Go to your web browser, Chrome, Firefox, anything works, and type in the IP address that it printed out first. So in this case, this 192.168.551, and then the port is 8888. And it's going to bring you to the screen where you're going to type in the password, which is DLI Nano. It should have also printed that password in the terminal. Now you're inside of the activity, and we can begin with the meat of the machine learning. First, go to the classification folder in the classification interactive Jupyter Notebook. We can now run individual code cells to get everything started. First, we're going to initialize our camera that we have plugged in, so the USB camera. Run the cell and wait for it to finish. In the bottom left, it'll say busy when it is running the cell and it will also have this asterisk next to the cell. You're going to want to wait for that to finish before you move on to the next cells. Now that the camera has been created and our Python kernel is now back to idle, we can continue with the rest of the activity. Next is to define our tasks and our categories. For this activity, we're going to be trying to for this activity, we're going to try to teach the model the difference between a thumbs up and a thumbs down. So we're going to want to define our categories as thumbs up and thumbs down, which should be done for you, and define our task as thumbs. Optionally, we can have multiple data sets if you want to retrain later. Uh, in this case, we have two data sets, A and B. Run the cell to set everything up and wait for it to finish. Next, move to the data collection cell. The cell defines the widgets by which we will be collecting data later. It's kind of just a maintenance cell. We don't really have to worry about it too much other than let it run, and it's pretty quick. The next cell is for the model, and this is the meat of the machine learning. This first line here will connect with CUDA, which is essentially the by communication between Python and the GPU on the Jetson Nano. It allows for easy parallelization, which is what makes the Jetson so fast at doing machine learning. Here we define our model. We're using ResNet 18, which is a pre, slightly pre-chained neural network with 18 uh, layers. And we're defining our input and output. So our input is 512. That will be the number of pixels in the picture. And our output is how many categories we have, so the length of the categories array. So run the cell, and everything should be good to go. This one might take a second or two to get going. Now that the model has been initialized, we can continue. Next is another maintenance cell for getting the live execution part set up. Should take a couple seconds. Next is the training and evaluation maintenance cell. You know, same thing. Uh, if you want to read through it, it's basically a way of inputting the current image into the model, and it will get an output prediction. Now we're at the interactive tool. It's the last cell in the model. You'll see a brief explanation of everything here, and once you run it, it should appear. Now we can start data collecting. As you can see, we have our two data sets defined earlier. We can just stick with A for now. And we're going to see our categories from earlier, in this case, thumbs up and thumbs down. In order to collect data, you select the category you want to collect data for, and then you click Add. So for instance, when I do thumbs up and I click add, it's going to add the image to our data set. And we should see on the, on, the, on the left here that it shows the image of me doing a thumbs up. Very cool. Let's say I wanted to take a thumbs down image. I do the same thing, but I switch the category widget to thumbs down, take a picture, and then in the thumbs down folder, there should be now an image of me doing a thumbs down. We recommend you take a lot more than one picture for each one, or otherwise the model won't be very good. So just keep collecting data, move your thumb around the frame, make sure to get as much data collecting as you can, and 
keep going. Wow. Now that we've collected data for both thumbs up and thumbs down, we're ready to train our model. We're going to set the epics to, the, to a significant number so that the model gets trained to be accurate. With only one epic, the model might not be trained to its fullest capacity. Too many epics, it's just not worth waiting that long. We think the good middle ground here is about 10. So set it to 10 epics, click train, and this part's going to probably take a little bit, but after a good solid minute or so, you should start seeing this progress bar turn blue. You should start seeing the loss and accuracy numbers uh, adjust and update. And then once this epox count reaches zero, you should see a live execution start. Whoa, very cool. There we go. As you can see now, the model is beginning to train. The blue progress bar is progressing. You should see the blue progress bar now starting to go across the screen, which means it's training. You should see this accuracy number roughly getting larger and larger, and this loss number roughly getting smaller and smaller. Accuracy is a good thing, and loss is a bad thing. So very good signs for us. Once it reaches the end of the progress bar, it's going to decrease the epics and it's going to do the whole progress bar again. So got to wait another nine times. Um, not ideal, but we're going to train a better model this way, which is what we want. You know? The Jetson is learning right now. The neurons are firing. Everything's very cool. Now that the model has finished training, if you click live, it should switch to the live execution. When I do a thumbs up, it should predict thumbs up. And when I do a thumbs down, it should predict a thumbs down, hopefully. As you can see, it's not always super great. Probably means I need to train my model a bit better. As you can see with my other hand, it's very, very accurately predicting thumbs down and not so Oh, okay, it's pretty good at thumbs up as well. On the other hand, though, not so good about thumbs down. So something to reconsider. You know, when it's over here, when it's on the sides, it's kind of predicting thumbs up. But in the middle, it's predicting thumbs down. So what this means is I just need more variety in my training data. Maybe I need to collect more pictures of you know, my hand farther away or closer to the camera and in the upper corners, the lower corners. Maybe I didn't get around as much as I could have. Um, so this is all something that you can you can either add to the data you already have by just going back to thumbs up, adding more data. You want to want to stop the live execution model while you do that though. So I can go back to thumbs up and add more data. Or if I want to start from scratch, I can select my other data set and start from scratch. Um, super 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 cool. Once you get your thumbs up thumbs down model to a good place, um, and you wanted to try some other things. Maybe you wanted to try maybe happy space versus sad face, or you know, maybe maybe you wanted to add a category and have maybe a middle uh, thumb or maybe like a peace sign or something. Um, you can add that category up where they are defined. So in this case, in the task cell, we define our categories here as thumbs up and thumbs down. But let's say instead we wanted, you know, we wanted a thumbs medium or a thumbs uh, sideways. And let's say we wanted to define new categories all together. We can use some of these example here. Uh, so like one, two, three, four, five with your hand. Whatever categories you feel are going to be a good model, you know, shoot for the stars. In addition to the classification model, we have a regression model, which is a completely different kind of model. Whereas classification, we're defining our categories 
based on the entire picture. For regression, we're using the XY coordinates of the thing and we're tracking the position as the output instead of the classification prediction. Before we switch to the regression module, make sure to close down your camera. We can only have one camera instance open at one time. So if you try to launch the camera on the other module, the Jetson is not going to like it. To restart the kernel, first go to the left here, click shut down all on the kernels and shut down all of the kernels. This may take a second or two. Once the kernel is set shut down, you can now traverse to the regression interactive. Go to the top here and click this circle arrow to restart the kernel. Now in the bottom left, it should go from no kernel to Python 3 and it should be idle and you should be ready to go. Let's run through the same cells to get to the same regression interactive GUI. Next, we're defining our categories. The default here is a nose, left, and right eye, but you can really add anything you would like. So I would recommend just sticking to these for the start. When you, once you start the interactive GUI, instead of clicking add to add a picture to the category, you're going to directly click on the image where you want that category to be defined. So in this case, we're collecting data for the nose position. So I would click on my nose and continue doing so. Maybe move my head to the left now. Maybe move it up. Down. And all around. Um, so then there's two other categories, left eye and right eye. I'm gonna wanna do exactly as they say. So my left eye. And you want to probably collect more data than I'm about to do in order to get an accurate model. This, this model is a lot more finicky than the other one. So you're going to want to collect even more data and even more diverse data in order to get a good model. And right eye. And then when you're done, same as last time, you click train, click live, and then it should have the green uh, circle follow around your face. When you're done collecting data, Right now I have a fair amount of data for each category, maybe not enough, but a, certainly an amount. Set the FX to 10, train, and do the same waiting game as last time, and you'll have a cool model where this green circle will follow a feature on your face. Once you're finished training the model, on the right here, you should see a blue circle, and it should be following around what you have the category set. So right now it's supposed to be following my nose. As you can see, not super accurate all the time, but it's roughly following my nose when it when it wants to. So obviously here I should have collected more images, you know, on the on the left side. Seems to be mistaken on where my nose is, but towards the middle it's a little more accurate. Towards the right side, it's especially accurate. Um, so it just means I need to collect more data on the left. Again, you can restart from scratch and collect more data in your second data set, or you can add more pictures to your existing data set and hope that it's more accurate with more pictures. Whoa, very cool. You know, shoot for the stars. You know, shoot for the stars.